Good afternoon, folks. This is Ashita from Code Club, and we have an exciting session lined up for you. Hi, everyone. I'm Anushka, and we're thrilled to introduce our speaker for today's session, Vanshika Agarwal. Vanshika is a software engineer at Oracle, where she interned as well. That's right, and she's one of the top performers in the Flipkart GWC 4.0 program. She is an Avery Dennison Invent Scholar 2021 and was part and part of Microsoft Engage program as well. Most importantly, she is an alumna of our college. We are overjoyed to have you here today, Vanshika. Welcome, Vanshika. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, hello everyone. I am Vanshika Agarwal. I am a pass out of 2023 batch. Uh, I've done my BTEC in electronics and telecommunication. And uh, right now I'm working as member of technical staff, which is like software engineer uh, at Oracle. So I'll just present my screen and we can just start the session. Um, just a second. Okay, so is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, so today we will be discussing uh, everything about tech interviews. So, the uh, uh, is anyone aware of the on-campus hiring that takes place in our college? Yes, we've had uh, sessions from the TNP cell. So, yeah, that's, that's uh, all we know right now, actually. Okay, so basically, um, the whole process is divided into four or five parts, depending on the company. So, the first part is the online assessment. The second part is the technical interview. The third part is also a technical interview. And lastly, you have an HR interview. Sometimes the HR interview is also integrated with the technical interviews and uh, it differs from company to company. So the online assessment is basically uh, whenever a company comes to the campus, for example, DSHA or RCHM or Oracle, they will first take an online screening test, which everyone who's eligible uh, to give the test can attempt. So the eligibility criteria also differs from company to company. It could be uh, 8 CGPA, the cutoff could be 8 CGPA. There could be some uh, branch cutoffs also, like only certain branches are allowed for some companies. Like um, during our time, at least, uh, Citibank used to allow only people from computer science and uh, IT, uh, not electronics. I'm not sure if it's the same case even now. So it differs from company to company. So once you're done with the online assessment, there's some cutoff uh, of the online assessment as well. So it is actually dependent on how well everyone else performed in the college. And depending on that, you get a shortlist uh, for the company that you have given the OA for. So online assessment is also called OA in short. So if you are selected uh, after the OA, you are eligible to give the technical interviews. So this also varies a little from company to company. Some companies will take all the three interviews and then let you know whether you are selected or not. And meanwhile, there are some other companies uh, who will take only first round, then some of the people are eliminated, then the second round, and there's another batch of eliminations and so on. So this is the basic uh, process that takes place. Like, Does anyone have any questions about this? Hello? I guess not. Okay. Um, and just let me know in case you're not able to see my screen or the changes in the slides. Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, I have just pinned down some resources for the online assessments. So this is, uh, the first one is neatcode.io. So, uh, he is uh, someone who's based out of the US and uh, he used to work for Amazon 
and then he switched companies and he started working for google and now i think um, he has resigned from google also and uh, he devotes his time completely to neat code so you can check out his uh, youtube channel also as well as this uh, sheet so it has a very good road map actually i'll just show the road map to you so it says that you need to first complete arrays and hashing then you can move to two pointers and stack and so on so it's a very uh, good map and you can actually uh, follow this road map that he has given uh, and uh, depending on your comfort you can move forward so the next one is lead code obviously so you can just practice all the questions on lead code so you can just refer to the road map by neat code and then just solve the so those same questions on lead code and uh, then uh, i'm sure everyone must have heard about take you forward uh, by striver so he is a, a software engineer working at google and recently uh, he has also talked about launching uh, some premium course on take you forward also so if you like his uh, way of teaching or anything you can think of taking that course also and then you have geeks for geeks so they have editorials and uh, some questions also company wise uh, interview experiences everything you can find everything on geeks for geeks so you can use geeks for geeks also uh, to refer okay next we have uh, so this was all about uh, a dsa so i think if all these four resources are covered properly or like you can just follow any one road map or any um, sheet for dsa then i think you should be covered for online assessments and the key to dsa is that you need to practice and your concepts should be quite clear so the theory topics can also be asked for uh, by companies so generally uh, for internships most of the companies that come to our college do not ask any theory but there are certain companies that do ask some theory goldman sachs oracle and uh, i think even atlassian used to ask some uh, theory topics as well like they'll just ask you uh, questions related to uh, oops or uh, dbms and operating system and computer networks so these are like pretty standard questions uh, they don't ask you anything which is very different like you can easily find uh, the top 50 interview questions for oops for dbms and so on uh you can refer to the take you forward uh, theory uh, as well like most as they have this most as dbms interview questions then similarly for os computer networks and oops so you can uh, refer to this uh, to get an idea about it another thing that is very helpful is uh, looking at the uh, interview experiences of the people who have already uh, gone through this process so the uh, i think you must have got some full time hiring sheets uh, i am not sure if they have made one for 2024 but uh, when we were uh, in college we had made one uh, for 2023 and we passed it on uh, passed it on to our juniors so i'm sure they must have also done something like that so if you refer to those sheets you will get a fairly clear idea about how to go about it and then for um, i've uh, written some other resources also for interview prep so the youtube channels that i've mentioned here gorav sen rachit jain and this the last one is by keerti purswani uh, they actually uh, show the mock interviews and they help you in getting an idea of exactly how your interview might go uh, if you are selected for any company's interview so watching this is actually a very good idea especially before you uh start practicing i think first you can have a look at one or two interviews then you can start practicing and then uh, every weekend or once in every two weeks you can practice uh the mock interviews you can solve the mock interviews along with them and then there are some websites like interview bit also where you can take some mock interviews uh, i think lead code also has that feature i'm not very sure you can check it uh, if anyone is interested and in fact uh, even code club can organize some mock interviews
if required like your seniors whoever is in fourth year right now they can take some mock interviews for people who are in second year or first year and so on yes yes okay so till now does anyone have any questions if anyone has questions they can switch on their mics and say it yeah because i'm not looking at the screen so okay so i'll just continue i'm assuming there are no questions so uh, i'll just uh, go by how a technical interview takes place so first um, the interviewer will give you the problem statement so you can just read the problem statement and you can start by discussing the problem and you should ask some clarifying questions about the time limit or what the range of the numbers will be or any uh, clarifying questions that you might require after that you can just build your logic and explain your pseudo code with an example and always start with the brute force method you always have to tell the brute force method not necessarily explain it with an example and the pseudo code but you should start with the brute force method once you're done with the brute force method you can uh, suggest ways of optimizing your algorithm and then explain the time and space complexity or uh, you can discuss the corner cases and then before you are done you have to test it for an input and output from your side and uh, you have to discuss your code like while you are writing the interviewer should know what you are thinking until and unless you specifically told you that um do not uh, tell me anything right now write the code completely and then explain it to me and if you are stuck you can ask for a hint and uh, always uh, try to add some comments in your code not completely because obviously uh, obviously it is uh, like uh, uh, the comments can take up some bit of your time so you are on a time constraint so it's not necessary that you'll add your comments initially you can add comments uh, so in some places where you think it is absolutely required and you can explicitly tell the interviewer that i'm not writing comments right now because of time constraints but once i'm done i will add them and always use verbose variable names like your variable names should be very descriptive you should not use arbitrary names like x or y or z or a or b like try to uh, use the complete name like if you're declaring an array with the name a so you can call it array a instead of just a so that way then the things that you should know this is i think pretty standard i'm sure you must be aware of this you should know about time and space complexity the searching and sorting algorithms uh problems in strings some recursion backtracking bit manipulation and dp and graphs so i think this is pretty standard so that's it from my side like if you have any questions please let me know and i can share the ppt if you want after the session oh yes thank you anshika uh, the sharing the ppt will be very helpful for us yeah sure i'll do that after the session okay so uh, can we move on to the questions that we yes have? sure okay just a minute okay, so, so the first question that we had was how to crack aptitude tests and where to study from okay so uh, i'm not very sure if aptitude tests are still taken um so pre covid uh, most of the companies used to take aptitude tests in our college but post covid i have uh, noticed that most of the companies do not take an aptitude test i think only goldman sachs is the company that takes an aptitude test so you can refer to geeks for geeks for that they have a lot of puzzles and logic games and uh, uh, i think that should be should sufficient because uh, only one company at least in our college is asking all of that so you can just refer to geeks for geeks and maybe some videos on youtube by apna college i think they have some logic and puzzles 
so you can uh, logic games and puzzles so you can refer to that okay okay so so the next question uh, next question was what is the technicality level of the interview questions okay, i am not very sure about technicality level of interview question means but uh, it actually varies from company to company if by technicality if by technicality you mean like what topics are covered then for internships in our college mainly um, arrays things uh, very basic things linkless and a little bit of dp i think that's the max that can be asked but then again it depends on the company sometimes in companies like disha and our station they last two um drafts also so it depends from company to company and uh, for this actually the best resource is that you can try to uh, look up into the previous years uh, interview experience sheet so in case they don't have one you can ask rajukar sir also i think um he had made one at least for our batch there was one i'm not sure if after our batch there has been some change or not no they had shared the sheet okay so that you can really refer to that like for every company you can refer to that it it is very helpful okay okay so uh, the next question was uh, what was your experience as a part of the microsoft engage program okay so microsoft engage during our times we used to have one uh, we had an online assessment and i think uh, it was an mcq test so they shortlisted quite a lot of people from our college also and in general also and then you were supposed to make a project uh, on a problem statement that was given to us so for us the problem statement was that we had to create a video conference app from scratch and we were assigned to some people who were working at microsoft as mentors so every mentor had around five to eight people as their mentees and under their guidance we had to make the apps and after that what happened is that uh, quite a lot of people got a direct uh, internship opportunity at microsoft without any interviews depending on their performance in the engage program then some of us uh, had to give some interviews like one or two depending on whatever feedback was given by our mentors and uh, um yeah that's it so basically it was an internship opportunity and some people got the internship opportunities converted into a full time offer okay so the next question is is it mandatory to do c or is java sufficient so c is not at all mandatory in fact i don't think any interviewer would prefer you to use c you can use c++ but not c and uh, you can give your interviews in any language c++ java python so it totally depends on you so i think the question focuses on is it sufficient that we know java only or do we have to know other languages as well oh uh, no only one language is fine uh, there is no need to know multiple languages at like not uh like for the interviews you can give it in any one language obviously if you have multiple languages in your resume then it adds weight to your resume and uh, it helps in you getting shortlisted but if you are just talking about the technical interviews you can give it in just java also our next question is that uh suppose you're not able to answer a question then how can we handle that situation or what could be done so that uh, you could salvage that situation okay so if you're not able to answer the question first of all you have to um, show that you're willing to learn uh, like uh, you can try whatever you know and then you can say that i'm sorry i'm not able to answer this question or this is beyond my scope and you have to be very polite about it but you also have to show a good mindset that you are willing to learn and you are willing to learn and uh, you can uh, just tell them that i will try to um, learn this 
after the interview or in the near future so that it looks like you're ready to learn and you're a flexible person okay so capacity has to be there yeah okay so what are the key factors that interviewers consider when evaluating a candidate's performance so the key factors will be were you able to explain your logic properly or not then uh, the coding practices that you undertook is your code clean comments are added or not how are the variable names and is your code syntactically correct and um have you mentioned the time and space complexity did you um discuss the corner cases so these are the basic things that every interviewer will evaluate and then uh, it depends on the interviewer also a little bit but if you're able to do all of this then most likely you will get a good feedback okay uh the next question was about the anxiety and stress management during these situation was there anything you did to uh prepare before an interview so that you could be more eloquent during it okay so this question is actually okay so i still get very nervous before interviews so i don't think i'm the best person to answer this question i think the only way you can manage stress is maybe talk to your parents or whomever you find talking to feels good to you and uh, uh you can try meditating or you can try a uh, deep breathing but other than that i don't have a lot of options here because till date i am very scared of interviews myself so Uh, so next question tips for students entering sy um i think you should just start practicing from for the first day only if possible like uh a maker uh, account, make an account on lead code or hacker rank or whatever website you are comfortable with uh you can start with hacker rank initially for one month you can keep doing that and then you can move to lead code and practice is the key according to me so this was this is like for the technical part for hr interviews actually most of us are very confused about hr interviews and what they exactly ask in them could you give us a few examples of what is asked in hr interviews okay so in case of hr interviews basically they are trying to judge your character as a person they want to know uh, if you are a very rigid person or not or um, they basically want to analyze your personality so in general uh, to survive in corporate you should have a flexible and malleable personality you should not be very rude not very upfront so the questions are also related to all these things they'll ask you what your vision is uh, what your plan for the next 5 or 10 years is and in case uh, they'll give you some situational questions like um, something has happened in your team you're not able to deliver it on time what will you do something like that so most of the questions for you uh, for you guys at least it will be situation based or hypothetical because you do not have a lot of industry exposure but basically it is just an interview to check your personality and your communication skills your thought process another question uh if we have any backlogs so can we get set for the inter- internship process okay um, i don't think you can set for the internship process if you have backlogs because most of the companies have a criteria that uh active backlogs are completely not allowed but very few companies allow passive backlogs also that you'll have to check with the company and with maybe the team uh so there there is a lot of que- lot of questions about time management was there any strategy that you used to divide up your time 
before giving interviews like uh, like last 24 hours before an interview what do they look like for you okay so generally in the last 24 uh, 24 hours um, i'll just try to revise some basic algorithms that are generally asked in interviews and other than that i do not study a lot uh, just the day before the interview because as i said i am not able to manage my stress very nicely so if uh, i over study or if i read something something a lot of times i just tend to forget it so i try to keep it relaxed and i'll just look at some basic things and focus on what i know uh the next is i guess can beginners start for everyone <laughs> sorry so oh, i just said that's that's actually a good strategy not uh, thinking too much being prepared well before time <laughs> okay yeah okay so the next question is how can beginners start web development so for web development uh, you can just buy any online course or there are a lot of videos also on youtube free videos but according to me you, all of this should be done in first year only and maximum till the first semester of second year post uh, first semester of second year you should just focus on your uh, dsa part because ultimately during the interviews they'll be asking your dsa obviously you should have one or two good projects but i think in our college in the curriculum they uh, they or anyways make you uh, have some projects on your resume like you have some compulsory projects for all your uh, core subjects i think so that is actually covered the projects part you can still delve into web development a little <laughs> in your second year like the first semester of your second year and your first year but in the second semester i think one should focus on dsa only for in, to get an internship so it would matter more for placements than internships so projects help you get a real life application uh, of uh, everything that you use so it is very helpful but uh, and it helps in your uh, like in your resume to have good projects but if someone does not have any projects but they have not even started dsa so i think the problem should be dsa and then projects but if someone has ample time then they can focus on web development and there are a lot of uh, like uh, there is one course on udemy by angela yu i think that's her name so her she has a um, course on monstag and it's a very comprehensive course in fact that was what i had started when i got the mentorship at microsoft so it's a very good course and uh, she explains everything from scratch and basically she makes you create your own website from the scratch and then add some different components i had used web rtc and react and node also in that so you can try doing that also but i think after if you are uh, if you don't have a lot of time then you should focus on dsa only first okay our uh, next question is about the etiquettes and behavior that one should have when you enter into an interview hall okay so i don't think i'm the best judge here because we had all our interviews online so in general the etiquette i think you should wish the interviewer you should ask them how how they are and i think uh, in general you should have a polite attitude other than that i don't think there's anything different that you should be doing like just don't be rude and uh, wear proper formal clothes this is one of the most important things so in my batch uh, i had gotten an internship in the third year itself so my interviews had been online so uh, i didn't have to face any offline interviews because i did not sit for placements i had already received the ppo but some of my batches had to sit for off camp like uh, offline interviews for the placement procedure and the biggest mistake that everyone was committing that they were not wearing proper formal clothes so a lot of people had to be sent back to their hostels to go and change so that they are in the proper attire like just be uh, prim and proper take a shower and go and basic 
like etiquette i think is required here because a lot of people did not do that in our batch i'm not sure if it is still being done but uh, wear proper clothes and uh, please take a shower and go and um, be polite right uh, we were told about this in our tnp cell session okay <laughs> we'll follow this yeah yeah um another question how was the experience for the oracle internship hiring okay so in my uh, so for oracle uh, the first uh, thing was the online assessment so in our online assessment we had uh, cs fundamentals also as well as coding questions so after that they had created a shortlist and then in that shortlist everyone uh, who got selected i think around 20 people or 25 people were shortlisted then we had the first round of technical interviews where we were given two dsa questions and if we were able to solve both of them we had we moved to the next round so um after the first round i was asked two questions i don't remember what those questions were but i can find it somewhere maybe if it is required so then what was the difficulty levels of the of those questions i think it was easy to medium okay so they ask you most likely most companies will ask easy to medium for internships or maybe medium but not hard i don't think any company in our college at least um uh, ask hard questions so yeah after those two uh, then i had another round uh, on the same day it was also one hour long the first round was also around 45 minutes to one hour long and in the second interview i was asked to see as fundamentals and some more small small coding questions and uh, then i had the hr round around 35 minutes or so okay <laughs> yeah oh, so the entire internship process was just two days um yeah that. like you get the online assessment then whenever the results come in and then you have all the rounds on the same day okay back to back yeah not necessarily back to back uh, it could be in different slots of the day depending on how many people have been shortlisted and so on but yeah some companies stretch the interviews till very late night also like goldman sachs is very notorious for that Uh, i think in our time they had taken interviews till 11 pm at night for some people okay so we have questions in the chat box just read them out Uh, the difficulty level of weekly and bi-weekly contests that take place on lead code and code forces is is it similar to the interviews is there like any comparison that we can give based on those questions okay so recently i haven't attended any of these contests but when i used to attend at that time it used to be similar only so i'm assuming it has been uh, it's been the same okay so they're, they're comparable so if we participate in these uh, contests then it's a it's a good good measure yes okay okay so the next question from messages what common mistakes did you work on that helped you crack the oracle um like there are no common mistakes actually they differ from person to person according to me so for me mainly i was not able to clear the oa for a lot of companies then i got shortlisted for three companies together i think atlassian mastercard and oracle but uh, oracle had uh, so mastercard i was not interested in so i did not give the interview for that and atlassian's interviews were supposed to be one week after oracle interviews so i thought because uh, there's this first come first serve sort of policy also i think 
uh, with the TNP cell. So I had to give Oracle interviews before Atlassian. So if I and I got selected at Oracle, so I couldn't sit for Atlassian interviews. In hindsight, it was <laughs> not a very good decision that I sat for Oracle. But uh, so you have to take some risks also. Um, like yes, taken the risk and uh, waited for Atlassian. But I thought if I'm getting an internship right now, I should just try that. So that is some mistake I can say. But yeah, it's not particularly a mistake. It differs from person to person, like whatever you are convenient with. But I guess it played well because you got the PPO. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so the last question here, I think. Mm. Leaders, Asia program. Could you give us some information about that? Okay, so uh, the McKinsey, um, NGWL, so every year they have some online assessment. You are supposed to answer some aptitude based questions and they select a particular number of uh, women candidates. And uh, throughout the year, uh, they conduct some workshops, maybe on resume building, on interviewing process at McKinsey, what the life of a management consultant looks like, and uh, everything related to management consultancy. So in the final year of my college, I was a little bit interested in that area. So I'd given the test and when I got selected, I got to attend those uh, conferences. So basically uh, it's about all of this. Okay, so uh, it's not uh, exactly related to engineering, but the no. managerial side. Yeah. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do we have any more questions that anyone would like to uh, switch on their mic and say, or you can just put it in the chat box? Okay, then I guess, I guess we're done. Oh, we have something. Okay, uh, how to explain our approach in an online interview? So if we don't have anything like uh, a notebook or a pen, how do you explain it just verbally? Um, so mostly the interviewer will give you some text editor or a Google document wherein you can start explaining uh, your approach. And it is always recommended that you explain it to them on the document or on the uh, IDE only so that they can just see what you're thinking so even when you're practicing you should stop practicing on paper and you can start practicing on a google doc only so that it becomes a little easier when you're giving interviews oh, that's that's a good idea okay then uh, I guess we're done for the day with the questions anyone else Looks like we're done. Okay. So to conclude our session, on behalf of Code Club, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed speaker, Vanshika Agarwal, for her really informative session on mastering technical interviews. Your insights and achievements have truly inspired us. Okay, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Have a nice day. We would also, we would also like to thank our organizing team for helping set up this event. And last but not the least, the participants who have actively participated. Because of them, this session has become memorable. Right. We look forward to more such engaging sessions in the future. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.
थैंक यू ओके बाय 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 एवरीवन